Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a problem with complex numbers. So first time, I'm excited. Let's get started. So we are supposed to find the maximum value of the absolute value of z minus 2 minus 6i if the absolute value of z plus 1 minus 2i is less than or equal to 3. Here z represents a complex number and we're going to talk about the definition real quick here and see how we can solve this problem. Okay, first of all, let's talk a little bit about basics. Uh, what is a complex number? Well, a complex number can be written as z equals x plus yi, where x and y are real numbers, and i is the number that satisfies the relationship i squared equals negative 1. You know, sometimes people say i is the square root of negative 1, but you got to remember that negative 1 has two square roots in the complex world, so we got to be very specific about that. So anyways, so... How do we represent complex numbers? There's a way to, you know, represent them in the plane, in the complex plane. But before that, let's just go ahead and try to solve this problem purely uh, algebraically. So what would happen if you did this? So you, you can replace z with x plus yi, and that would give you something like the absolute value of x minus 2 plus y minus 6 times the quantity i. And now you're talking about a complex number. Uh, its absolute value. So how do you find the absolute value? You take the real part, which is x minus 2, you square that, and then you take the complex part or imaginary part, which is y minus 6, you square that, you add them up, and then you take the square root. That is basically the absolute value of the complex number. And we want to maximize this. So we want to maximize this value when we have the following condition. So if, the, if you use the given condition, you're going to be getting something like x plus yi plus 1 minus 2i, and then its its absolute value is basically going to look like x plus 1 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared and the square root of that. And we're given that this is equal to this or this less this is less than or equal to 3. Okay, now we do have an inequality and then we have an expression that we're supposed to maximize. Obviously, if you get into the algebra nitty-gritty of this, that's going to get quite complicated. So we do need another approach, and that is an analytical approach, which is pretty good. But before we get started with the solution, let's go ahead and review some definitions. Okay, so for example, if you have two complex numbers, z1 and z2, people usually call them z sub 1, but I don't like saying that, so I just say z1. So there are two complex numbers, and the absolute value of the difference of two complex numbers, it basically represents the distance between those numbers. Now. On a number line, if you do this for two real numbers, it's also true, right? But it's also true in two dimensions. So z1 and z2 can be expressed as basically points uh, in the plane, and then the distance between them is just going to be the difference of their, or the absolute value of their difference. Now, using that dif uh, distance definition, we can talk about another thing here. So that's an expression. Now, what happens if the distance between z and a plus bi becomes a constant? Then you're talking about a circle whose center is a comma b because a, a comma b is basically a fixed point and z is arbitrary. So you're basically talking about the set of points that are the same distance from a given point, which is a comma b in this case, and that represents obviously a circle. What happens if this is a less than or equal to? Then you're also talking about the the inside of the circle. So any point inside the circle will also satisfy the inequality. Okay, so having said this, and looking at our expression here, let's go ahead and solve this by using analytical geometry. Okay, so what am I supposed to do? First of all, I'm supposed to talk about a circle here. So we do have a circle. This is my circle, right? Including the inside. So let's go ahead and just you know, make a graph of that circle. What is that circle going to look like, right? Well, based on the givens here, that circle is going to look like the following because you can basically write this as z minus negative 1 plus 2i, right, in parentheses. Now, this absolute value basically represents, this one represents the center of the circle, okay? So we have a circle whose center is at negative uh, 1 comma 2 and its radius is given right here is 3. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to visualize that. So we do have a circle whose center is at negative 1, 2 here, 
and its radius is 3. There you go. And including in the inside of the circle. Of course, the circle itself is also included because it's less than or equal to. Okay. Now, what are we talking about when we say that this is equal to, uh, this is equal to, what are we trying to do here? Okay. This is less than or equal to 3, and we're trying to maximize this. What does this represent? Okay. That represents the distance between two complex numbers. Remember, we just talked about it. We said that the absolute value of z1 minus z2 is the distance between z1 and z2. Here, what is z1 and what is z2? z1 is z, so you're basically talking about the distance between z and 2 plus 6i, and you want to maximize that distance, okay? So how do you maximize the distance? First of all, z is on the circle or inside the circle, and 2 plus 6i is a fixed point, right? Here we go. So here is our 2 comma 6, which can be written as 2 plus 6i, and then the distance between this point and that point. You want that to be maximized, but not necessarily the center. We're basically talking about any point inside the circle, or it could be on the circle, and then we're talking about the distance between any point inside the circle and this point here, we, we need to maximize it. Obviously, when you try to maximize that distance, you want to be as far away as possible from 2 comma 6, right? If, because if you're on this side, then you're going to be pretty close. If you're on that side, rather, then you're going to be pretty far. So that's what we want to do. We want to maximize the distance. Therefore, I'd like to connect 2 comma 6. Remember, my expression was z minus, okay, let me change the color here so you can see, you know, something like, okay. So we're talking about the absolute value of z minus 2 plus 6i, which basically represents the distance between this point and any point in the circle. So how am I going to maximize that distance? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and connect this point to the center, and I'll just extend it. So I'm going to go like this, okay? So I'm just going to go like that. Hopefully, that'll be, well, kind of goes through the center. So just bear with me on that one. So now what I want to do is, I, of course, I want to just erase this part. I don't really need that. And I don't think I need those points either. So here's the idea. This is my fixed point. Oopsies. That's my fixed point. And what I'd like to do is, between this fixed point and any point inside the circle, I want to max find the maximum distance. And obviously, that point that gives us the maximum dis distance is going to be on the circle all the way on the other side of this segment. Okay? So they're going to be on opposite ends, basically. So the idea is, if you're trying to maximize this distance, you want to have this point. So then the question is, what is the distance between 2, 6 and this point? Now, here's a million dollar question. Do we know the coordinates of this point? We don't. Can we find it? Possibly. But how do you find it, right? There's an easy way to do it. First of all, notice that the segment needs to go through the center. And let me explain why. If you pick any other segment that doesn't go through the center, so like, let's say you go like this, right? Okay. Let's say you pick a segment like this. Well, obviously, that's not going to be the maximum distance because think about it. Like from symmetry, you can be in, on either side of this basically diameter, right? That's a diameter. Then you're not going to get the longest length. So that's why we want to be right at the center, right through the center, so that we can get the maximum distance, all right? So these segments are not going to help us find the answer. That's why we need to go with the highest, longest length here. Okay, cool. So now, how do we proceed? Well, that didn't go so well, huh? Anyways, something like that. Now, here is the idea. Well, do we know the center of the circle? We do. It is negative 1, 2, right? So here's the idea. I'm going to find the distance between 2, 6 and the center of the circle, which is negative 1, 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the radius of the circle to that distance, and that is going to give me the maximum distance. Okay? So that's the whole idea. Let's go ahead and proceed with the solution. What am I going to do? First of all, I'm going to find the distance between two points. How do you find the distance? Well, the distance formula tells you to subtract the x-coordinates, negative 1 minus 2. That's a negative 3. And then square it, you know, from Pythagorean theorem, basically. And then subtract the 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. Square it. And then that's basically going to give you a, like a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the distance is going to be 5. So this is 5, and I would like to add the radius to it. And remember, the radius of the circle was 3, right? And how do we know that? Well, we do know that because our inequality basically here, the r, the r value is going to give us 
the radius, and in this case, it will be 3. Okay, so the radius is 3, and I just add that distance to 5, and that does give me the maximum distance that I've been looking for. So, the maximum value of the expression is then, the maximum value of our expression, which is the, the absolute value of z minus 2 minus 6i, right? That's what it was given uh, originally, this expression right here, right? That's what we were trying to maximize, this expression right here. So the maximum value of that expression is going to equal to 3 plus 5, which is 8. Now, let me just mention something real quick here. What if they ask us about the minimum distance, right? What is the minimum value of this expression? Well, then in that case, here's what you can do. You, you have the 5 here from this point. Oopsies. Looks like I'm moving the segment here. So this is uh, the distance between these two points is 5. And if you subtract the radius 3 from it, then you'll find 2, which is also going to give you the minimum value at the same time. But we're not looking for that, and the answer to this problem is going to be 8. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And until tomorrow, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.